I just want to say thank you to all the fighters, of course, uh, everybody that's up here, um, and to the media, and to everybody that's worked hard to uh, put this whole show together. So uh, thank you, and who? The rest of the fighters are getting dressed. <laughs> okay, uh, obviously we're going to, you know, uh, throw it out there. But uh, before that, uh, let me, where did Ali go? Oh, here, there we go. I think Ali wanted to uh, say a few words before we uh, hand out questions or get questions asked. Mr. General Abdelaziz. Hey, thank, hey, thank you, everybody. We have a great night of fighting. Um, there was a lot of great matches, and I said it's going to be some upset, you know. Um, and for everybody who criticized me for Marlon, Josh Rattenhouse fight, uh, fighting Marlon, I said this is going to go five round fights. Uh, if Marlon doesn't finish him in the first round, and uh, we don't put our mismatches at World Series of Fighting, I think every fight was competitive. Uh, I think the judges make a, a wrong call in the first fight. I, I thought Ozzy uh, won, Ray thought Johnny won. We went against the other on this one. But I uh, really appreciate all the media for coming today. and. Uh, Thank you again for being uh, the biggest supporter of us, and uh, I really appreciate all the support. Thank you. Yes. Can you address the, obviously there's an increased scrutiny on Super Smart and every time he's in a fight. What do you think about the style? Do you think he let go too late? Or? No, absolutely. I don't know. Absolutely. He, he, let, he let go as soon as the ref. When, when, when you go in the dressing room, the ref told you, do not let go without me telling you to let go. And I think as soon as the ref touched him, he let go right away. Uh, he fought a very durable, tough Steve Carroll. Uh, he beat him. Uh, we know what he does. And Steve Carroll almost got him in a triangle. He went to Oma Palada, he got out of it, and uh, he went for a heel hook. He reversed to a knee bar, and after that got inverted inside heel hook. And, uh, uh, you know, just uh, sometimes inverted heel hook in the gym, you don't have time to tap. You know, and it's just sometimes yeah, Steve Carroll got hurt because just uh, the nature of the submission. Yes, go ahead. Are you looking at a rematch, or are you looking for somebody else to come Well, right now, uh, obviously, uh, we have Steve Fitch, who's uh, scheduled, uh, uh, sorry, John Fitch, who's scheduled to uh, fight for that title. And that, I'm not sure exactly when, when uh, will. Uh, what's going to happen here, uh, John Fitch is going to fight Guzman Pajaros in July. Five-round fight, most likely will be the main event uh, for, the, uh, for July, for WSF 11. Go ahead. Sorry, uh, I was just going to ask if you have any update on the status of Steve Carl. Is he okay? Seems to have kind of grab his leg right after the fight. Yeah, he, he's, I mean, other than uh, his knee popped a little bit. Uh, what well, he said it popped and it popped back in. So uh, he's okay. I think obviously he's got to go to the, the hospital and, and have it looked at and checked. How about Reading House? Uh, Reading House, uh, I mean, what a gutsy guy. Uh, he fought to the bitter end, and uh, you know there were times where I thought it was it was going to be over. But uh, again, Rennie House uh, showed that uh, he's got a big heart. Uh, and I actually was one of the guys that said from the start that Rennie House actually impressed the hell out of me in Miami when he went up against Alexis Wheeler. And uh, again, he did it again tonight. He was a little obviously he was down because he, you know, he lost, but. And that's the nature of the game. You know, uh, sometimes you're going to win some and lose some. But all in all, he, he, he's in good health. No, no, it's definitely July. Yeah. Uh-huh. It'll be the first week of July, it'll be WSOF 11. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Uh, we'll to the Terry Ford, I think I guess we could just get some more slides on the submission. Obviously, it was a fantastic performance, but uh, I know he thinks he let go, but some people are saying maybe he didn't. Just can he give you his thoughts on the top? É, quer saber seus pensamentos sobre a finalização? Algumas pessoas ainda estão achando que você não soltou rápido bastante. O que você acha disso? 
Cara, não, eu acho que age normal. Eu acho que todo mundo que tava ali viu. O, o juiz foi lá falar comigo antes, que era pra soltar quando ele chegasse. Ele chegou, puxou, soltei. Eu acho que foi, foi no tempo normal. Eu acho que é porque, eu, por eu ser um atleta explosivo, né? Aí quando pega assim, a pessoa dá a impressão de que tá demorando. Porque quando eu já vou na perna, o cara falou, já, todo mundo já pensa, ah, já pegou. Mas não tem nada disso. Tanto é que o meu adversário veio, me deu os parabéns, e inclusive vai treinar comigo lá no Rio de Janeiro, quando ele estiver pronto para isso. Não, não, it was normal. Um, you know, he, he's very explosive, so when he goes for a position, it seems like he's, you know, it's taking longer. The judge, the referee instructed him to only let go when, when the, the ref told him to let go, he let go immediately. And he, he thinks it was normal, you know, and he's, he actually has invited uh, um, his, his opponent to come to Rio and train with him. Let me, let me, uh, I, I was also, I mean, you know, the submission happened right in front of Ali and I. So I thought uh, as soon as the referee told him to let go, he let go. So if you uh, think that he held it too long, then you're crazy. Uh, I think everybody needs to leave the kid, these kids alone. You know, the, he went through a lot already and he's a champ now. I think everybody start to congratulate him uh, and uh, praise him as a champ, you know. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, his last season mission in UFC, I don't think he held out too long because, so, you know, maybe a second, but when you're talking about inside inverted heel hook, you can talk to anybody fighting in this room, Jessica Aguilar, everybody, uh, many black belt in the room, you don't have time to tap. If a regular heel hook from the outside, you do have time to roll out of it, he turned into an e-bar, and after that, he went for an inverted heel hook. Uh, many, many guys I know, even include myself, uh, I popped my MCL because you don't have time to tap. And it's funny uh, that Ali says that because even Steve Carl said that. He said he didn't, he didn't have time to, to ta uh, tap. So, like, again, I said, I mean, uh, like Ali said, leave the guy alone. He's the champ. Uh, he actually let go of that hook as soon as the, uh, uh, the referee said stop. And, and just to follow up, obviously, and time to take away his uh, celebration time, but we know that already his next fight is going to be John Fitch in July. He asked us uh, to tell us what he thinks about that matchup. Cara, eu não importo de lutar com ninguém. É, com quem eles mandarem eu lutar, eu vou lutar porque eles são meus patrões. Eles são meus patrões. Agora. Ele vai lutar com ninguém. Eles são seus patrões agora e eles vão lutar com ninguém que eles querem lutar. E ele vai lutar com o John Fitch. E o John Fitch aceitou o fight já. E vai ser um evento main event. Uh, o main event vai ser Nick Noll for Justin Gaethje, WSF 11. And Ty Tyrone Ospong will be on this card also. Awesome. And if I could please just ask Josh, that was a fantastic performance for you tonight. Uh, you know, we thought he was going to be the one with early power, and did you think you were going to be able to finish that way, and how did you feel about the fight? Um, you know, that was my game plan was to, you know, come out and not have to wrestle or anything, you know. But I knew that uh, I heard his coach say right before the fight started, go get him, go get him now. And so I knew he was going to come out and be aggressive. And my whole game plan was to come out and throw some big punches and let him know that I could hurt him. And I figured if I threw him threw some big punches and real big ones that spun me around, that, uh, <laughs> that he would know that I had some power. And once he started to respect my power, that I would put together some combinations. And that was my game plan. And that's you know how it worked out. And I guess knowing that the title fight uh, is coming up, I mean, what what are your plans? Do you want to stay busy? Do you want to fight again? Yeah, I think these guys know that I want to stay busy. I mean, that's been the majority of our, our talks, you know. And I think now, after you know, I didn't really have any plans after this fight with Stinson, you know. Um, because of the way the Steve Carl fight went, you know, and, and how I felt during that fight, I just wanted to come back and perform again and, you know, prove to myself that I had an off night, you know. And, and I did that, and now I just, I don't know. I knew that John Fitch was in line for the, you know, the shot at this belt. Now you know that he's fighting Paul Harris, and I will sit back and enjoy that one, but I will be ringing Ali's phone saying, hey, I want to fight, and I don't want to wait. He's not shy about it. No, that's, listen, I wasn't supposed to be on this card. And I told Ali, listen, put me on the card or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure something else out. And Ali said, all right, let's work it out. So, you know, I'm, I'm 34 years old in 10 days. A body in motion stays in motion. And if this body slows down, it really slows down. So I want to be active. Go ahead. Mr. Okami had a great debut for the 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, right now he's scheduled to uh, headline the uh, Tokyo Japan event, which is August 2nd. Uh, so that's where it's at. Uh, and I might add one more thing too. We have Jesse Taylor fighting J J David Branch, and uh, if one of them, you know, uh, you know, I, I think that'll make sense. Okami been ringed top ten for a long time, and if one of these guys win, possibly he fight in August if this guy's healthy and ready to go. Feels like it popped a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what can I say? Uh, sorry we didn't put on a better fight. Um, really want to come out here and put on a good show. The guy's super slick on the ground. What can I say? Congrats to him. Sorry, say that again. Uh, right now, we haven't, uh, I mean, we have a date, but we can't release that date as of yet. Um, I could lie to you and she, give you a date, but... <laughs> She's she been asking this question for three days, but, and she tried to get an answer. She asked me like three times, but good, good try. <laughs> it's good. Dozo. Can I ask you to Yeah. Yeah. Somebody get injured, he might be jumping the light. Where may be alive? I'm sure you will. Well, <laughs> 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 北米で戦うことが本WSOFを選んだ理由なので、もう出ることはすごく光栄に思ってます。and uh, he answered that uh, it's a great pleasure for me to have uh, a good debut on WSOF. And, uh, but uh, of course, uh, I want to fight in, I keep, I keep fighting in North America. But at the same time, uh, it's a great honor for me to fight in Japan with WSOF so that uh, we can uh, add some more boost into Japanese MMA scene. Any other I just want to ask Marlon about his future here in the WSOF, if you could talk about the fight today, too. Hello, guys. I'm so happy, you know. Uh, I came from, from Brazil and with a dream, and today it's, it's coming true, you know. And I, I'm so thankful now for the World Series to open the doors for me, bring me to fight, fight with Miguel Torres, and they grow me as a fighter, you know, and my team, Ricardo Almeida with Mark Henry, Anderson Frank, uh, Frankie Edgar, everyone, you know, that helped me. And my future now, I don't wanna even think, you know, I just wanna go home, rest, see my family, my wife, that's it. Marlon, can you tell us what was going through your head? Uh, you know, it looked like you had him hurt very badly, but maybe we're a little hesitant to, to over-engage. Did you feel like, 
you know, maybe you let off the gas a little bit or should have gotten the finish. Why, why were you not able to get the finish against such a, a, an injured opponent? I didn't want to make a mistake, you know. Of course, I, could, I think I could finish. But, man, it's a fight. It's a five-rounds fight. I've never been in a five-rounds fight. And I was pacing myself and, and making sure I could go the five rounds, you know. And, but uh, Josh Rettenhouse was a tough guy. And I was hitting him really hard. And he didn't give up, you know. He kept fighting. He kept pushing the pace and coming. And, man, I, I really give my best. But I, I want to go home, go to my gym, train with Mark and Ricardo, and keep getting better. Also, just to uh, introduce Bryson Henson, who's in the far end there, who won by a knockout earlier in the round. I think it was about a minute or so into the first round. Again, he's another 135er, and he's another kid to look out for. Uh, tonight was the first time that the two Henson brothers actually fought on the same card. And uh, it was also the first time that we're just a fighting had two brothers fighting on the card. So uh, if you have any questions for him also. Um, you got to ask him a question. I've never seen anybody got knocked out like that. Do you? Do you? Do you? Now this is against the age. You want to just talk about the fight? Okay. What, what do you think about the fight? Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Josh. Um, I guess there wasn't really much to talk about. Um, it's fast. Uh, I had him against the cage and took care of business. And I mean, what's there to really talk about? I guess, like Ali said, this is kind of a rare finish like in that position. Normally, you just throw punches to get a guy to move into a different position. So, I mean, were you throwing to, to, to finish or were you just trying to get him to move? I was, I was throwing to hurt him, but um, I wasn't expecting that. So, it kind of went in my favor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Any questions over here? Any question for the fan? <laughs> All right, we're going to open it up for one on ones after. All right. Um, do you decide it, uh, who whom will be fighting in Japan in August, except the Yushin Okami? Uh, that card hasn't been 100% confirmed yet. Ali and I have just, you know, obviously talked about it, and uh, that's not yet ready to be released. Uh, so I think uh, within the next week or so or two, um, we would have a finalized card. But right now, obviously, our headliner is uh, Yuji Okami for sure. Uh, Amy Fujino? Um, that is very possible, too. Um, uh, again, uh, I think, you know, it's a possibility that uh, we could uh, get her to face Jessica Aguilar uh, as, as for the title. So uh, that is very possible. But let me add something to that. Um, <clears throat> She's going to fight Jessica Aguilar, uh, you know, sometime in the summer. And it's, the timing is great for her to fight in Japan, but... If we don't make this fight in Japan, Amy and Jessica can fight in the state, maybe in July or August. Uh, but they're gonna fight. This is the fight is gonna happen. Yeah, and just to clear something up, uh, also uh, with this situation in Japan, for example, um, <clears throat> if you're signed to Worcester's of Fighting, you can fight pretty much anywhere Worcester's of Fighting uh, allows you to fight. Uh, what I mean by that, uh, in the Worcester's of Fighting. Uh, events, whether it's here in the States or in Japan. Uh, you don't have to be managed by Pancras or anybody like that, and you will not be managed by Pancras or anybody like that. So any fighter that uh, is signed to Worcester Fighting Japan, they will fight wherever Worcester are Fighting, the mothership which he, it's here in the U.S. tells them to fight. Because there's been a lot of, uh, you know, back and forth discussions and saying this and that, people going back and forth. and. And it's done to bug me, so just want to, you know, get that clear. All right, guys. What? Uh, for Josh Berkman, uh, you had a considerable uh, height and reach disadvantage uh, against uh, Stinson. Uh, how did that affect your training? What do you think about that? Uh, you know, a lot of the times I think that that reach is an advantage in boxing, but I don't know that the way that mixed martial arts is set up, that it's necessarily a reach or, a, you know, an advantage. 
Um, I like fighting taller opponents. I've fought a lot of taller guys. I feel like my hips are lower than those my, than theirs. Um, my feet are faster than theirs, and so it gives me other advantages. Um, with what I, I just knew that I couldn't stay in front of him at his range, which is why I kind of was, you know, moving my feet, throwing big punches, so I could just maybe, you know, m make him think oh, about my power and not think about establishing his range. So it was part of it, but I don't ever feel like there that distance and that reach is a is a big advantage for taller opponents that I face. Any more questions? Any other questions, guys? Danny. I don't, I'm just going to yeah, hand that gonna, over to you. We're going to leave these fighters up here for one-on-one -on -one interviews. Well, one more thing, Danny. Hey, I just want to... Holly likes to talk. I want to I wanna, I wanna thank you, the media. This is the biggest media we ever got, and uh, it really, really mean a lot for us. We we have MMA Fight, MMA Junk, and all this other great outlet, and uh, it really mean a lot for us. We're growing as a, uh, uh, you know, as a promotion, and without you guys, we couldn't do it, and I really appreciate it. Thank you.